So before this video can even like start, uh, I have to obviously give a big shout out to <laughs> he made the idea. It wasn't mine. Uh, I guess it kind of goes with the trend of me taking ideas, but um, you know, without him, this series wouldn't exist. So let um, let him know that he was uh, greatly appreciated, just like how I did. And uh, thank you so much yet again. Ah, uh, Warden. Ferrana's mascot, who somehow didn't even get put onto the main splash card of the game. <laughs> he also just happens to be one of my best heroes. Playing Warren is kind of like a chore. Playing him effectively is boring but effective, but using his entire kit is risky, but can be so fun pulled off correctly. Warren is a Vanguard, and Vanguards normally are very basic run-of-the-mill heroes. Nothing too flashy, but if you try really hard enough with this character in the right hands, he seems unbeatable. Okay, so now before we actually get into the tips and tricks, uh, we all know For Honor is a fashion show before it's even a fighting game. Uh, every warden kind of needs to decide on what kind of fashion they're going to dedicate themselves to. There's the obvious kind of edge warden, who normally consists of the black iron with rare hints of just gold in the armor, normally always paired with the ornament, the iron worm. Uh, there's the crusader wardens, who just kind of like the more traditional looking knight. And then there's wardens like me that enjoy the more vibrant colors that warden can really offer you. Or I guess just buy the hero skin because oh my god, that armor's just yeah. fucking beautiful. Yeah. Alright, now that you've kind of decided on what fashion you're gonna lock in with, it's time to decide what kind of player you want to be. You know, as I said in the opening, warden is a very basic vanguard. His options are just kind of limited when it comes to offense, especially if you want to be effective. Let's start with what I think is just kind of the most effective, but more boring playstyle of the warden. What I like to call the master of the shoulder. Now, we can't lie, Warden's Bash is kind of one of the better bashes in the game. It has a level 1, level 2, and a level 3, completely feintable in every kind of stage. Every single one of these is extremely effective, it all just comes down to what kind of situation calls for. Is your opponent kind of turtling? Well, throw some level 1s in there, just to kind of open up and get some damage on. Is your opponent panic dodging a lot? Well, your hyper armor on your level 3 really lets you trade for that damage. Is your opponent waiting on your level 3? Well, give him a level 2 to throw off his dodge timings. Any vigilant viewer has kind of realized I haven't even talked about his sword. And well, that's the thing. In this playstyle of Warren, you never use your sword. Okay, so let me get into the pros and cons of this one. The pros of this playstyle is you physically can't be parried unless they're actually playing a character like Black Briar. The only options they have to beat you is light or bash dodging your bash. Uh, if you notice someone trying to consistently light you out of your bashes, you just kind of have to commit to those level 1s to condition them. If you can't condition your opponent, this is where the playstyle extremely falls apart and then we get into the cons. A lot of Warden players end up falling for the same kind of mistake, uh, and that's having a pattern. When you play Warden, the last thing you kind of want to do is have a pattern. But what's a pattern, you ask? Well, it's very simple. Uh, when you choose the same offense multiple times, Normally you kind of see this around light spammers, they always kind of choose the same direction to throw their lights every time they start their offense, and it makes them just extremely kind of predictable. Uh, this also translates into Warden. If you follow a pattern like level 1 bash into your level 3 bash every time you go on the offense, then people are going to catch on very fast. This is where conditioning comes into play. When you start a fight, you should kind of faint the first couple of your bashes and see how your opponent reacts from there. Are they dodging instantly? Are they waiting? Are they not dodging at all? This is going to show you how they're going to play against you the entire time. Now, if the shoulder really isn't your preferred playstyle, that's fine. Uh, you're probably going to like the more risky but fun way to play Warren. And yes, it actually lets you use the big sword he's advertised the clinic will be the master of. Uh, this playstyle kind of revolves around Ward and hitting like a truck, but still trying to use his badge as more of a fake out tool. Now, how do you actually use his sword? Well, it's a lot more plain and simple than it really seems. Uh, your lights are double lights, so if you land one, you get a second one for free. Normally, this should be used to interrupt your opponent instead of opening him up, leading to more of like a counter-attack playstyle. His heavies kinda do hit hard. That's a lot of damage! 
having that unblockable in your second heavy is like a gift from God because without that, your sword just sucks. His zone isn't much to write home about, but what it does have is two things. It's got a wide arc hit, so it's good for clearing minions and kind of hitting people around you, and it's got this kind of niche little gap closer. But now my favorite move, Warden's Valiant Breakthrough. This is supposed to be Warden's Chase Tool, but who says you can't use it as a close-up execute type move? Now, I love using a move like this. It's actually way more effective than you truly think, and I would say it's more effective than actually using it for its intended purpose. Uh, now, sadly, the cons of using the sword are a lot worse than if you just wanted to use the bash. Warden's lights are kind of way too slow to rely on as an effective opening tool. Anyone kind of paying attention and awake normally can carry Warden lights with ease. Now, I can't tell you why, but people just love to carry Warden heavies. I, I can't tell you why, but every game I play, if I've tried to open up someone with a neutral heavy, I'm always met with being parried. His zone is also not a good opening tool either, because I'll give you one guess why. If you chose option D, then yes, you are correct. It's slow predictable, it's quite costly compared to other zones, <laughs> and it just sucks. And his chase tool is actually really bad oh, if you're using it for chasing. <laughs> <laughs> I know, really weird. Why would the chase tool be bad at chasing? Well, it's really simple. If you don't predict that your opponent is going to roll, most of the time they can kind of get up fast enough, lock onto you, and pair you, and there's just nothing much you can do about it. Now, if only his chase tool had some sort of undodgeable property and it was faintable. Oh. Now again, my vigilant viewer has realized I haven't actually talked about Warden's crushing counter. And it's plain and simple. It fucking sucks. <laughs> Warlord, Black Prior, Afira, Highlander. All these characters I've named have good crushing counters because they come from all sides and it can be used externally to defend you in counterattacking in ganks. What do I mean by this? Well, if I'm being hit from the side, I can easily just throw a light at the person trying to hit me turn it into a crushing counter and hit the person in front of me, giving me not only a perfect defensive tool, but also giving me some damage and a good offensive tool. But with Wardens, it's physically impossible to use his crushing counter in an anti-gank to defend yourself from people you really aren't locked onto. The only use this thing has is the mental damage it causes your opponent when they inevitably get hit by it. So out of which of these playstyles should you pick before playing Warden? Should you bash everyone to death or attempt to use the sword? Well, the answer is actually both. <laughs> I have labeled each playstyle's kind of strengths and weaknesses, but combine these two together and it turns into a wicked fun hero to play. Now the thing about Warden that makes him unique to Warmonger is that while Warmonger can only bash after a bite attack, Warden can bash after anything. Heavy, light, zone, all these options can be comboed into your chain bash. Warden effectively has no actual chain ender, meaning Warden's offense kind of stops when you either stop yourself or run out of stamina. This makes it so your offense can just end any time you want, no matter what. All you gotta do is just choose the right tool for the job. Now here's where I'm gonna kind of list some niche tricks you could do with Warden to kind of give you an edge in fights. When you're fighting multiple people, sometimes it's really beneficial to lock onto someone, start a level 1 bash, and then switch targets as fast as possible and hit them with a level 1 bash. Most of the time, nobody can react fast enough, and they're mostly waiting for you to charge to level 3 and then lock onto somebody else. You should actively avoid doing this because most of the time, people are going to dodge out of the way because it's such a long time and so it's just very obvious. Warden's heavy and block was actually really good. If you want a big hitting damage option, a wide hitbox for team fights and externals, what also makes it really good is that the unblockable can be delayed super hard, meaning that it can actively wait till the last possible second to throw it, catching people's bad options or making people have to react quicker than normal. Now the way I truly like to use this tool is I always faint it. Something about the unblockable being delayed makes it makes people want to parry it way more often than when it was thrown normally. If you're doing this trick, I would highly suggest fainting it more often than committing to it. Well guys, it's been uh, the first how-to series, and obviously I kind of started with my main, 
But uh, let me know who I should cover next. Obviously, if you're gonna pick a knight, the video will come up faster. Uh, Cause obviously it's easier for me to do a knight seeing how I've kind of just learned all I need to know about all of them. Uh, till then, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you guys have a good day.